Hey, this is Jeff. Welcome to walkthrough number one of Belthin's Quo Vages. I recently finished a walkthrough of Koito Ergo Sum, Belthin's quest mod for New Vegas. Home, hey, Wadsworth. Koito Ergo Sum is a sequel to this one. I'll be doing a few things slightly differently in this series, the main one being that for Koito Ergo Sum, I started a new character with an extremely lopsided a persuasion based build um, no combat skills this time I am using an experienced character that I have had forever 27th level good at pretty much everything a uh, couple of dump stats <clears throat> unarmed and big guns but uh, everything else is either maxed out or close and uh, basically fears no evil in addition to the base game and official DLC, I'll be using a couple of other mods I can't live without. Luigi N64's Paradise Lost Retexture, which is a little thing I know, but it just always bugged me that you get this unique skill book and it just looks like Lion Congressional style. And Henicle and Coke's Lee Enfield Rifle. Um, just because reasons. Uh, it uses the same ammo as the Vanilla Sniper Rifle and does slightly more damage, but it's a bolt action, so the rate of fire is lower. Definitely not overpowered gameplay-wise. Uh, I'm using Belfin's Face Gen Race, which let me import this handsome fellow. The Breeze Male Body Replacer, the BNB Female Body Replacer, and Belthin's BQV to BNB, which makes the Quo Vagis outfits compatible with that. Uh, Belthin's BQV to DLC, which adds a bunch of stuff to Quo Vagis if you have the official DLC loaded. And the Quo Vagis compatible version of Belthin's Mea Culpa, which is one of his uh, older quest mods. It's not directly related, but it does have a little bit of crossover between a couple of the characters and it lets you repair a unique outfit in Quo Vagis that you can only get repaired by a vendor otherwise. Um, <laughs> case of beer, fresh carrots, crab cakes, a little bit of wine and liquor. That looks uh, like a familiar refrigerator. Other than that, I trimmed down my load order a good bit to get a decent frame rate while recording, uh, so you won't see a bunch of stuff and think it's part of Quo Vagis when it actually isn't. Yeah, my desk and cabinets are full of random junk that I really thought was organized better than it is. I'm starting from a save where... Um, you can see my bobblehead collection is almost complete. I don't have energy weapons because I stopped doing the main quest at the Waters of Life, so Dad is happily tinkering away at Project Purity forever, which of course also means I haven't done Broken Steel. Uh, by the way, I'm not even going to try to avoid Fallout 3 spoilers, and obviously there are spoilers for Quo Vagis ahead. Anyway, I have not done the Tenpenny Tower quest because I don't like either ending, and I haven't done the pit because I don't like either ending. Other than that, I have done pretty much all of the vanilla side quests, so there will probably be a few characters I can't talk to about stuff related to Quo Vagis, but hopefully not too many. So, here we are in Canterbury Commons. Uh, let's get this show on the road. Quo Vagis starts here, in this building, right around the corner from Dom and Machete's house. And we'll talk to a dude who's looking at a Luma screen. Man, this sucks. I want to be where the action is. You mean in there? What's it like? Pricey, but worth it. You know what I mean? So why don't you go in? I can't even afford some damn squirrel stew. Well, I guess you could save up for it. Good luck. You're right. I shouldn't quibble over a few caps. Well, I'll see you later. I, on the other hand, have no shortage of caps. <laughs> 27,000. Yeah, I think I can probably uh, tip a few dancers.
Welcome to Lollipops. I'm Malibu. We don't actually have any girls working today, so I'll let you slide on the cover charge. What is this place? A saloon? A brothel? It's dead is what it is. But when business is good, it's a little of both. Why is business so slow? Raiders, slavers, mutants, nobody wants to travel anymore. Caravan crews come in sometimes, but that's about it. I've dealt with problems like that before. Maybe we could work out a deal. If you want to help, talk to Mr. Slater. He's the owner. He's usually in the basement. Well, nice meeting you, Malibu. I have to go now. Don't be a stranger. Hey. Hey there. I'm guessing you're not a waiter. Can I grab a drink? Yeah, of course. Help yourself. What's your story? What are you doing here? What do you think? We're here to make some money. What's going on around here? For fuck's sake, I'm bored. There ain't nothing happening today. Nice place. I'm gonna take a look around. Friendly warning. Don't act like a jackass, or you're out of here. Okie doke. So upstairs we have <clears throat> this interesting little padded room with posters for pre-war magazines and hollow vids and nightclubs. And I'm going to go ahead and check out the attic. You know what? I'm not even going to bother. I just want a souvenir shirt and red roaches aren't even worth the ammo. Let's talk to Mr. Slater. Here we've got what looks like a studio of some kind. Bobby pins. Can never have too many of those. And here he is. You must be lost. The entertainment's upstairs. Are you Mr. Slater? Malibu said we could talk business. Please, call me Larry. Are you an entertainer? Adventurer, explorer, would-be entrepreneur. A dabble. I'm impressed. What I really need is a partner. Someone with an eye for talent to recruit entertainers. And if possible, someone who can invest capital for maintenance, improvements, marketing, that sort of thing. What's my return on investment? 30% of net after expenses. You'll be leveraging my brand and reputation after all. With your gross, you can do 50, unless you blow 250 a week on chems or charity. Kind of surprised with my speech skill of 100, I only have a 68% chance, but my barter, uh, barter makes it an automatic win. Your business acumen is commendable. 50% it is. You have a deal. I'm delighted to hear it. The manager's office has been vacant for some time. Make yourself at home. Here's the key. Now, where should we stop? Let's talk about recruiting. As I'm sure you've noticed, we are woefully understaffed. A young lady with an impeccable resume accepted a position recently, but she is several days overdue, and I fear for her safety. I'll look into it. Much appreciated. I'll mark her last known whereabouts on your pit boy. Oh, a 3000. I favored that model myself. As rock solid and long lasting as my pecker. But I should not delay you further. Good luck. All right. And we have just started the main quest. Uh, I'm going to do a little housekeeping in here. We'll probably edit that out. Um, but 
this manager's office is, in my opinion, a very excellent player home. It's got all sorts of containers for organizing your stuff, which uh, my Megaton home was sorely lacking. <laughs> um, time for a fresh start, right? Don't be shy about looting any of these containers. You're part owner, so it isn't stealing. Studio B has a bookshelf, and unlike most school books, these aren't consumed when you read them. Uh, plus, they're hilarious, so if your skills are less than 100, definitely read them. And the bathroom has one of several collectible vintage lollipops magazines, so don't forget to pick that up. How's it going? What's a nice girl like you doing in a place like this? I rode shotgun with a caravan. They all stop in Canterbury. One of the other guards convinced me to come in for a drink. Larry offered me a job. Better pay less shooting, no brainer. Are you just the receptionist or are you on the menu? I'm just picky about my lovers. The companionship end of the business isn't for me, but just a receptionist, hardly. More like floor manager, a procurement specialist, bouncer when necessary, but it won't be necessary, right? I'd better get to it. Bye. Later. I swapped my combat armor for a Lollipops logo t-shirt because this mod doesn't have mortal danger lurking around every corner, and I'm just a black t-shirt kind of guy. Sell some junk to Joe and go rescue the missing prostitute. Uh, closest map marker is Reclining Groves, so we'll go there. Talon Company. Guys are gonna lose your fingers. Oh, and Death Claws. Get out the dart gun, make some popcorn, and watch the show. Oh, and two sentry bots? Yeah, I forgot how ridiculous random encounters get when you're over 20th level. Okay, Death Claws dead. Don't need the dart gun. The Death Claw got that one pretty good, so I'll just snipe him before I switch to pulse grenades. Ah. All right, the healthy one is over there. Come here. I have something for you. Oh, you should not have turned that way, my friend. You gonna go off? Did I just get hurt by my own pulse grenade? I thought pulse weapons only hurt robots and people in power armor. Apparently not. Well, let's see if I can find all these bodies in the dark. So just right up the hill here, we have the party shack. That's weird. There are usually two dead raiders here. Um, hmm. Anyway, uh, the quest marker is pointing to this Dear Johnny letter. Click on that, and you get a note from Chaz telling her customers that she's going to Canterbury Commons by way of the power station. And there's the power station. I do have a map marker for that, so we'll just fast travel. When we get there, we'll see that Chaz has been captured by three slavers, and the obvious way to rescue her is just to kill them. You can kill them first, or if you're low level, you can run up and free her before they turn hostile, and she'll help you. But there's a third option that a lot of people might not know about. If you have access to Paradise Falls, then they will recognize you as a fellow slaver and you can just intimidate them into giving her to you. Dude, that's not very nice. Oh, so tempting. Anyway, um, <clears throat> just run up and talk to the guy closest to Chas before he turns hostile. I told you to leave. You'd better listen. What do you want? 
Now, my character currently has very good karma, but I've done things in the past I'm not particularly proud of, like, say, working with slavers. This one's mine, pal. If eulogy bitches, tell them to take it out of my pay. If it keeps you happy and your gun in your holster, then it's well worth it to me. And that's it. They will just leave now, and we can talk to Chaz. Sometimes being bad feels pretty damn good, eh? My friends have no respect for the merchandise. Sorry if they shook you up. Thanks. I'll try and keep it together. Your Chaz? Larry sent me. He thought you might be in trouble. Sweet. The bodies weren't there, but my psychic powers are telling me your friends are dead. The slavers must have read your note and tracked you. All I can say is, better them than me. It took them days to catch you. You're pretty resourceful. Well, with what I do for a living, you need to be. And uh, you can give her a gun with this dialogue option if you want her to help you with the slavers, but there's no point doing that now. Uh, let's get moving. I'm right behind you. I got a whole bottle of whiskey with my name on it. Sell the loot from the Talon Mercs to Joe. What can I do for you? Oh, here's Maggie. Hey. Trying to beat the crowd? Well, I'm always open. She's the vendor from Mea Culpa, but she has more money than Joe. Oh, and I took care of that superhero problem. It hasn't really helped business much, but thanks anyway. Did you know there's a ghoul community in the History Museum on the Mall? I prefer a radiated American. So the rumors are true then. I haven't been downtown since the first days of the war. I don't think I could handle going home now. Too many memories. Let's see what you have for sale. Scavengers haggled over junk before the war, too. We called it yard sales. So, remember that whiskey? Keep it moving. All right, let's go. The sooner we get back, the sooner we get drunk. When you enter the building, Chaz is already upstairs, so let's check on her first. Oh, don't. I just realized all my whiskey is still in Megaton. Um, she mentions liking it several times, and once a day you can give her a bottle, which is part of an unmarked side quest. But we'll have to do that later. Well, hello there, Mr. Dangerous. What can I do for you? You wasted no time relaxing, I see. How is that shit? Potent. It'll burn all the way down. See ya, Chaz. Bye, sweetie. That reminds me, I almost forgot to grab these hand-rolled cigarettes. Um, just like the ones in Koito Ergo Sum, they give you night vision, so very handy. Oh, uh, a carrot. I love carrots. How goes the search for our missing recruit? She's upstairs making herself at home as we speak. I cannot begin to express my relief and gratitude. Once she's settled in, I look forward to finally making her acquaintance in person. She's feisty. You'll like her. I don't mean to press, but a capital investment would help ensure the lucrative stream of customers I promised the young lady. I can do that. I'm glad to hear it. 500 caps would put us far enough ahead of the monthly upkeep to make basic improvements and begin marketing. Here you go. Spend it wisely. Very generous. I'll put your capital to work immediately. So now we have a working girl and working capital. What's next? Things are coming together nicely. If you have outside activities to pursue, this would be an opportune time. I'll speak with you later. Larry needs a couple days to fix up the lounge, so while we wait, we can do the mea culpa quest. Oh, and there's a letter here from Chaz to Larry that explains how she heard about the job, but there's no point to pick that up now. Behind Larry's desk, there are news clippings that you can read. Click on them to learn some of his backstory from before the war. Short version, he built an adult entertainment company from the ground up. He wasn't very popular with the conservative political establishment at the time, and his lawyer Stoney got him out of all kinds of legal jams. Anyway, we're about out of time, so we will do mea culpa next week. See you then.